Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back again to the Starlighter IC High League Star Series Season 3. I'm Lyrical, going to be joined by the always lovely Trent Pax. It's going to be a great game. It's Horde facing off against Cloud9. Trent, how you feeling? You, you, you said earlier that both these teams, you know, they ended up dropping down to a couple of other squads. Um, given that we don't have any, like, sort of, you know, factors that tie those two teams together is there any way that you feel like might stand a better chance in this uh i i guess cloud nine would have to be favored i think it would be fair to say just in terms of general matchups that they played against other teams and how the squads are doing overall as a whole so i would give them the edge but maybe like 60 40 65 35 somewhere in that region I do Five really like their remaining. opener, although they didn't get the slider. I think the uh, Dazzle, as well as taking the Earth Spirit just away from Horde, is pretty strong. But Radiant speaking of back. strong, that is actually kind of scary. Yeah, that's a lone druid. That's a that's a the big old guy. Um, Slardar lone druid as a start. That to me feels like it's incredibly good. Uh, they do have the Earth Spirit on Cloud Nine's lineup, so there's some potential to get aggressive early on. And considering there's a Dazzle there as the other support, probably not going to have to play too much of a babysitter in that bottom lane. Um, we saw a Lone Druid mid earlier coming out. Do you think that that's something else we might end up seeing later? Yeah, it'll just depend on the matchup. Um, should just be the idea of throwing it into the mid lane or into the safe lane. Uh, just depending on uh, what else you can grab. Like if they want to send this Slardar into maybe like a support role and then give Excalibur that OD like he had earlier, we might see that go mid instead. Kind of the same options that we saw previously. Cloud9 though, no real mystery in terms of uh, at least lanes or roles for the most part. It's weird to be looking to get some action going across the map. And then we have our support Dazzle. So just three cores left for Cloud9. Hmm. Uh, not that you give away too much with a Dazzle and Earth Spirit. The only thing is that generally people will tend to try and apply pressure to the safe lane of their opponents to try and draw that Earth Spirit there where he's a little bit Ten less valuable compared remaining. to uh, ganking off laners or mid laners. Yeah. Ooh, an Five Axe also going to get banned out. I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more of the Axe. That to me feels like it's a hero that's may exactly. maybe a little bit underused. Um, granted, he did get sort of a, a couple of I guess not nerfs, but the changes to the jungle, I think, did hurt him a little bit. He was a guy that liked to stack up those camps pretty continuously. And he obviously can't do that as often Radiant now, but uh, still in str incredibly strong in his own right. Also going to be banning out that Ember Spirit. Do you think that this is going to be sort of a constant? They just try and take away those heroes with strong initiation uh, away from from Horde? Or is it something about Axe in particular Ten they'd be worried about? Remaining. Yeah, I think uh, the combination of just um, Axe being remaining. obviously pretty damn good against Dazzle as he dunks through Graves and still being a very solid hero to hold people in place uh, for that lone druid Dyer makes a lot of sense. They'll also remove the other major defensive support in the Oracle. Kind of interesting, but good hero up against Earth Spirit. Uh, he can essentially save two heroes from an Earth Spirit initiation, ulting one and Fates eating the other. Yeah. No, definitely. That would be uh, quite strong. And I, I guess the other thing that, you know, there there's still a Shadow Demon available in the pool. I, I don't know if you want to go for that. We did see the combination oh, in the last game. Oh, he got dunked, too. Oh, he did. Yeah. He's All right. Well, there he goes. Gone. He's out of there. Everybody's gone. Cloud9's the only people with defensive supports. I guess you could go for a Pudge. <laughs> A Horde Pudge. A Pablo Pudge. Yeah, uh, a Rubik. Another very popular hero sets up decently uh for someone like a slayer there just has that quick initiation right now i'm kind of thinking about baby knight i wonder if they uh if they don't opt for the od Ten themselves if they remaining. send it over to the way of horde um are they gonna opt towards that sniper that we know Five he loves is remaining. that enough can you out snipe the new <laughs> sniper that would be a true battle here oh He's god i don't know I just like i want it to happen even though i don't think it's that good for cloud nine i just i need it you know yeah well let's figure out who who's the king well I, I think let's compare the two for a second we've got lone druid who's faster uh has about the Dyer same range team. and has escape and then you have sniper who's slow and has no escape i feel like there's a reason that lone druid's being picked <laughs> in this way <laughs> yeah he's pretty damn good um darkster really like this 
not banning it, the uh, the dex here would have been exceptionally risky for Cloud9 to do um, if they didn't Five take it right here, just because it's so good with the Slayer Dire, it enables him, but just with uh, Dex here, Earth Spirit, it's equally as awesome. Time. Plus, they banned the Oracle. So, Horde, I guess when they saw the Oracle ban, they were thinking of uh, how good that would be with a Bat Rider. But mm. similarly, Dex here also gets dumpstered in lane by Oracle. So, missed that one a little bit there in terms of our drafting. So, nicely mm. done, Cloud9. And they're well set up here. Got their mid and their carry left to go. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, too, is that you could have gone for something if it was just a solo Darkseer, like a Disruptor. But with the Earth Spirit already picked up, I feel like that pick becomes so much less value. Like, Disruptor is really not great in a situation where you have, like, a three on two. He doesn't offer all that much damage. So they would need to go for one of those other, like, traditional ways to deal with the Darkseer. And, I, well, they're going to go for the Disruptor. I don't know <laughs> if I like is. it. Because... Uh, if it's they... still really good against Darkseer in lane. Yeah. Um, and if this Lone Druid is the safe lane hero, it won't matter if Earth Spirit's there. Okay. Because you're going to have three heroes through just two. And like, if this is a support Slayer Dire 2, like, those three heroes, Ten one glimpse seconds. back, should be able to annihilate that whole safe lane, still get decent rotations, and still rotate Five Disruptor seconds. to set up for Slayer Dire, just like a, a Shadow Demon or Rubik. And Disruptor actually has bigger range than all of those heroes yeah. like, compared to time. any of the other position five initiators, as long as you catch that first person out of place. That's true. Yeah, I, I guess I always hear people talk about Disruptor being less effective when there's that other, you know, when there's a, a dual lane against him. But I guess with Lone Druid, that sort of bulks it up enough, like you're saying. Um, does that give you a reason to want Slardar in that position? Or do you still think you leave that open to potentially be an offlane Slardar and then run somebody else down there who could also bring the pain train? Yeah, I think it's, um, you, you certainly want to wait just to see what Cloud9 have in their own safe lane. You already know it's probably going to be a little bit weaker in terms of a safe lane, so you might be able to get away with someone like a Slardar who maybe doesn't bully as well as some of our other offlaners. Um, and he's also, he's just so valuable as a position four that <laughs> sometimes you just don't want to, like, throw him yeah. into that offlane. You know, he can often just get so much farm roaming around the map that it almost seems like a waste. And, well, there's your strong laner Dial right there, just getting a Sven. Pick. So that definitely frees up Earth Spirit to roam around the map quite a bit with the Darkseer and do his work up in the top lane, do his work in the mid. Uh, Dazzle Sven still be quite the hero to contest with. I'd be a little bit worried. Yeah, and I mean, there's still the Legion Commander in the pool, which you could go back for. It feels not quite as good with the up against a Sven, probably. Um, and a Dazzle, honestly. <laughs> it's also a pretty big problem. Uh, who else is really left there for the offline position? Still I feel like they didn't take it. Yeah. It's still very strong. Especially with the other team fight that they've got, Crush, Static Storm, uh, not to mention, well, I guess that you wouldn't end up running it anywhere over there towards the the, the off lane of Cloud Nine. They already got the Dark Seer, so they don't need to take it away. But that doesn't mean Cloud Nine could just focus uh, it out for their ban. Nyx is also still very strong, just up against the Dark Seer, uh, Earth Spirit, Dazzle. Yeah, I uh, I kind of like Nyx here too. I'm going to stick with your original thought. I'm saying Sand King is the pick. 100% Horde, the show hero. it to me. Let's see it. <laughs> I, what else? They, they want to save their mid, I would assume, since they're going to have last pick here. So Ten No, they have to do the, the double. It's the, the reversed arrows again. Oh, the reversed arrows. Oh, always there. Classic. Look at that. Trent Pax knew what was up. Radiant Called it. Stuck with the gut. Is that what it is? Yeah. No. <laughs> I like the Sand King better than Nyx anyway. Sand King will be way better in lane, um, but the Nyx does offer a very good... Like, and he's like a big combo breaker versus Darkseer. He, he's so good when he gets that carapace off during the vacuum and he, he just stops the big combination of the wall coming out. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, it's also sort of a, a bit of, I mean, it just feels like it fits within everything else their draft is doing, just team fight. Reserve time. Yeah, now the question comes to that mid hero. Kind of annoying uh, when you have someone who's so flexible, like Lone Druid, if you can throw him mid or safe lane, but you don't get to know what that mid laner is going to be. Mm. So uh, they, they might be able to whip out something that would really dumpster yeah, your Lone Druid, so you try and think of something a little bit safer. <laughs> Cloud Nine. Seeker. All right, nice ban. Very frustrating hero. Huh. That's a unique one. It's He's been coming back more to prominence. I feel like I wouldn't have liked Horde's draft if they went with that, but maybe it would have been okay. I don't know. Who knows? Ten seconds remaining. I think I still kind of like OD. Mm. I think it's pretty Five strong against Cloud9. Uh, sets up for the slider to initiate early on. 
Or sorry, for a horde, rather. Um, it'll let you uh, just like slide out, comes into the lift. Go for the silence. Yeah, that makes a good amount of sense. If if Lone Druid is shown as the mid hero here, could Cloud9 go like Weaver? Is that something that would be okay? Uh, yeah, we might see something like that. Diffusal Blade 2 to try and deal with the Warcry. Yeah. Uh, Lone Druid does Ten put out a lot of magical remaining. damage, despite being that heavy right clear because he goes with that Maelstrom into Mjolnir kind of a build. So Warcry is not 100% effective against him, and uh, it'll Ooh. just be a jug. So again, still some flexibility here in terms of yeah. where they, they want to go, but taking care of that silencer, just uh, not having to worry about getting off your spins, your omnis, and there's the baby knight hero. He called it. You knew it. We saw El what Classico. was going to happen. So, Sniper is the last pick. Signals, that's who they're going to be running. Uh, do you like Lone Druid or Juggernaut more against this guy here in the mid lane, at least through the laning stage? Oh, I don't know. It's a tough one. It's kind of tough. If you have your Jug top against the Darkseer, it's probably going to be a lot stronger. I think I feel like mid would be kind of even. Uh, if you have really good bear micro, then Lone Druid's going to be the best for sure, you would think, just by running on that sniper before he has a lot of points into the uh, the range. So, yeah, I guess you would send the bear mid, send Jug up top, use your healing ward against Iron Shells. Mm. And having the threat of spin with Glimpse Crush is Ten rather seconds. terrifying. Yeah, that's great. I love that. Do you, do you think that there's any chance that we might just Five actually see them leave remaining. like the Sand King and the and the Slardar together in the bottom lane and try and pressure them down there? Or do you think that that's not really going to be able to accomplish too much against the Sven? Uh, it could, for sure, actually. I'm um, just pressuring on in to the, um, the Dazzle Sven and, and trying to draw that Earth Spirit down there. Mm -hmm. It could definitely be an option for them. Yeah. Could even end up going aggressive with like a Juggernaut too, but it's just... Uh, a solo Sand King top, but we'll see. Yeah. Looks like they, they're they at least going to start down there. Who's holding the wards? Hockey's got two of them, so. They're grouping up for a smoke here from Horde, I think. Everybody run down mid. They have it up for Ake, and they can go if they want to, but maybe they're not going for a smoke? I don't know exactly. This seems a little bit of an odd movement to me. No, no wards placed down early. Ake's holding the smoke. I think they just want it to last. Wow, that... Oh, that was slider ping. Okay. Hester Joe, he has a soul ring recipe. Uh, we do have Noya as well, who has a smoke of his own. The early wards that have been placed out, it looks like they were just grouped together in case there was a movement by Cloud9. And I'll end up holding towards mid. Okay, so nothing too crazy. Looks like it's just the more standard lanes that you would expect. <laughs> what the, this, I don't know what he, he's doing. Begins. He's crazy. Mr. Hester Joe, crazy. Well, throwing out his hellos. Are they going for. Oh. Oh. Kind of like a quick early kill here. Interesting. Yeah. Right. down too. They should be able to find this. I, I don't expect that you're expecting this if you're if you're Cloud9 right now. And Ace off to the side as his rise. This this should bear fruit, I think. He hasn't leveled up anything. Oh, he just took Shadow. Yeah, he's super dead. All right, Rise <laughs> taking a lot of damage. And oh, there you go. First blood drawn by Ake. First blood. I thought I saw that in the forecast. Okay, very nice. So they end up sending Noe up top to just leech the start as uh, has to be able to jungle pretty quickly with the iron shells and this gives you some quick experience on your earth spirit let him have some roaming potential but this is really great for gork because he's gonna try and bully noia as much as possible he's plenty of regen and so he just wants to trade noia all the way yeah mid lane it's gonna look pretty even for now as the levels go up of course the game does become a much more difficult for baby knight but trying to fight up against excalibur already taking a lot of damage god he needs to be careful in this lane early on even yeah, early is gonna be the worst part too. Like without take aim, you have to be so close to this bear; it's just not even possible. Yeah. You will get annihilated. God, look at this; he's being pushed back like crazy. Baby Knight really struggling here early on. And it's not like he's gonna be able to burst through this bear's HP. So bottom lane, they're pressuring the Sven. Top lane, it's a one-on-one -on -one of Juggernaut versus Earth Spirit. This early start is going great for Horde. Yeah, lane's uh, smart matchup here. 
Sometimes you can, you know, maybe it's a bit more uh, risky to, to bring numerous heroes down the bottom lane. You don't get that first kill or something, and then Sven might just be farming under the tower. But with the vision they have, Rises for us to go do this stupid pull that for somehow is still in the game, and I thought it was going to get patched out day one. Top lane Gork. Oh. It's being run down by Iron Shells, though. Yeah, he doesn't have Spin leveled up as of yet. He needs to go for it now and still taking the damage. Right clicks. He's going to need two more to find it. They do have the damage, though, as the roll in from Noya came. And Juggernaut getting very greedy. But yeah. Which but pull seriously, was that you're How is about? this still a thing? Down here at the Radiant Tier 2. I thought they were going to patch this out like, oh. day one. But why is this still a thing? Yeah, I don't know. That's kind of silly. You can do it with Earth Spirit kicking it, right? Is that the way it works? You can do it with anything. No, uh, no. Just... Like, you can just pull this camp into the tower to get free experience as a support. So in these situations where oh. they're pressuring down so heavily, you just leave Ace under the tower, oh, and Dazzle comes over here and gets a full camp of neutrals. I mean, it seems pretty balanced to me. I don't know what you're complaining <laughs> about, Mr. Trent Pax, but... I'm just a hater. <laughs> Rice is going to be pulling the Ancients now. It's a nice little stack for himself. And well, so far, all the CS in the world going to Horde. It's looking like they're the top of the mark. Although, that being said, you know, Dazzle's still getting a good bit for himself as Cobble's going to be going for the body blocks, trying to find the kill. Ake here as well. And well, guess what? They got another crush for you. Rise taking the damage and is going to drop another kill going the way of Ake. Cobble being a part of it. Now I see. It was tactical. Let him get the experience. So the kill's worth more. Absolutely. Mid lane. Excalibur. Ooh, close one. Yeah, it needs to be careful there. Noya rolling in each and every time, and it does have, you know, level three at this point, so the fact that he's a part of that kill against Gork as well, it's 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 not easy at this point. He's gonna have to heal back up from the all the damage coming out from the spam. A bit of lag there. I wanna see, is Sniper shorter than the creeps? Yeah, he's significantly shorter than the creeps. Oh, guy? wow. Look at this. Didn't even know. So tiny. I mean, he is a dwarf, but damn, dude. It's nuts. All right. Early levels, early CS going into their favor. Uh, is there any way that Cloud9 can switch up the lanes at this point? Like, Do they just need to keep the pressure onto the Juggernaut at this stage and hope that they can find kills? All right, there's problems. <laughs> They're having some issues. Uh, all right. Apparently, everyone's having some problems. Um, Cloud Nine lanes issues. I mean, well, that's Joe's EU internet, doing okay. right? That's oh yeah. Over in I mean, NA, we're just, fine. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> I don't know. I I think that uh, is Ace going for another one of these pulls here? I'm not quite sure. He just wants to head off to the camps and get himself some farm wherever he can. Like, he's being so heavily pressured. Yeah, his lane's gone. He, he does not own one. And this is fine, too. Like, yeah, your Dex here has 10 more gold than the Jug, but who really cares? Like, this is fine for a Juggernaut, considering what you're trading overall. Mm -hmm. Lone Druid's on top. Excalibur, free lane. Courier's bringing him plenty of goodies. Lots of packet loss. My internet is fine. Very interesting. <laughs> There's a lot of thinking. Uh, 4%. That's good, too. It, it, Lone Druid, considering that we've got no Drow Ranger in this game, he was able to completely take <laughs> over when it was Miracle. Is this still going to just be, like, incredibly hard to, to deal with? Yeah. I, I don't think it's... Uh, the Drow Aura not required for this okay. one. It's <laughs> still very strong. Oh no. More more connection issues. We could talk more about cosmetics. I always love to do that. It's like my go-to in these moments. Your go-to? What, yeah. what have you been playing lately with your fancy cosmetics? I've actually been spamming Spectre. Um, have you, uh, Good hero. Have you been playing any Spectre at all? Have you seen any in your pubs? I played a game the other day. It was okay. Pretty strong hero. I One thing I like about Spectre right now, I was watching RTZ stream a couple different games, and you can do so many different builds. Yeah. It's kind of fun. You can go, like, Hood Blade Mail. You can go Vanguard Blade Mail. You can just go for, like, Yasha, Diffusal, Manta kind of crap still. You can go Radiance. Yeah. 
Well, t- tell me what it is that you like about Blade Mail Inspector. It's an item that I absolutely hate building on the hero. Like, what? I know that a lot of people do it, but I really don't like Blade Mail because I feel like you just end up sort of standing there and doing nothing and nobody focuses you. You just sort of chill. Oh, you and- got to get in those games where they got the uncontrollable AoEs, man. Like, okay. Got some stupid Slark that keeps jumping on people and he's trying to do his Dark Pack crap. That stuff's pretty funny. Throwing your Blade Mail and suddenly he's at like quarter percent HP. Have you looked at the, like, actually up close at the Slardar model? This is amazing. Look at this guy. Oh, yeah. No, he looks awesome. Oh, my god. They, they really nailed it on this one. It took a while, but... Look at... He's so buff. Look at these yeah. arms. Oh, my Imagine god. Every, every model had this much detail. That would be the dream, dude. Look at this. Oh, what a guy. From behind, he looks good, too. Oh, it's great. <laughs> From behind, that, that booty? <laughs> yeah, it's good. Real good. Oh, my god. Slardar. What a what a character uh, here! C- control yourself. <laughs> I can't. It's just it's too much. Over at Lone Druid. Oh, I didn't realize that he has the Iron Talon little cosmeticy thing too for this one. It's pretty cool looking. But yeah, Spectre's oh, a big yeah. one for me. Who who's been your spam go to? As we get the gone now, hopefully we can restart oh, I, soon. I, I was having a lot of fun with Crystal Maiden. Really? Oh yeah, it's a good hero. She's she's pretty strong. I think Lion's pretty decent right now. Have you played the new PL with eggs? That is funny. I don't know how good it is, but it's funny. <laughs> I haven't played the new PL with eggs. I actually, I, I, when I saw the change, I was like, "That is the stupidest Agnes upgrade I've ever heard." I didn't realize that. I thought it was just heroes. It works yeah. on creeps. Oh so my you can god! Just, like you can like run up to a creep wave and just eh, and, you know lance it. Suddenly you have all these illusions. Yeah, that's pretty fun. I'm just gonna mention this as we get back into the game. That sniper looks like uh, the little hunter guy from Jumanji. But excellent. We'll leave that in now. Let's get back into the game. Let's try and refresh our memories where everybody is. Juggernaut is having a tough time up top, but it kind of doesn't matter because overall Horde is getting a lot out of each of these lanes. Is that He's taking fair? one for the team. Yeah. He's being the, the real star player here. And uh, going to be a little bit cautious right now, though. This is like his most vulnerable point. Yeah, he'll just healing ward up now. Yeah, this is real scary stuff. Does have his healing ward down, so at least something is going to be going a bit his way. And getting close to six as well. Can he turn around one of these dives if they do happen to go too deep? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, that would be definitely very cautious. He's got that mango that Juggernauts love to have early on. Uh, he's so fine right now compared to what's Radiant going on on the Radiant talent. side. There's a Sven with an Iron Talent just jungling right now because he has no lane. Yeah. Because they brought down this tri lane with the Saiyan King, and they can... They just can't do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's rough. I mean, he'll get a couple stacks here and there and can pick up bounty runes, which is a way to make it better, but it's not a great solution in the long run. Is there anything else that they can do besides just trying to hide the Sven and let him jungle? Like, do they well, try One option think? would be to do something with Noya and bring him down to the bottom lane, but they're very content on just having him up here and trying to apply pressure this way. Oh. It needs to work soon, though, so... Yeah, gone upon and well this might be enough to find the kill the right clicks come through and they do end up taking down that juggernaut nicely played yeah it's good they really needed that what she needed and we'll see if they decide to keep up the pressure there or if maybe they call it enough at that point um in the meantime ake is here mid and lone druid is continuing to just keep the pressure on this baby knight sniper dude ace is going with the wraparound ganks <laughs> you never Knocking expect the, the level six Sven gank. Now oh, going right. in. He's gonna get him. Uh, Stormhammer, Roy Boulder back in. Kick him. Kick him in the butt. No, Excalibur's just gonna walk oh, he's away. Got no mana. Oh, that really hurts. Yeah. That would have been a kill for sure. I think if he had mana. Hmm. Well, uh, Sven also did not pop God Strength for that one. It probably. Would have been the kill at that point. They would have had to stuck around for like one or two more right clicks. But regardless, the failed gank. And you know, this gives a little bit of extra room up here to the top for Juggernaut. Continues to farm away. Yeah, some space created. At the very least. Scalver takes uh, some more peckings in the mid lane. Yeah. Rise bottom is going to get ran down. And well, E skill is going to be here. Oh, finds the kill. <laughs> Easy. No time for a grave. No, Horde are kind of grouped up back mid again. Are you feeling like you're going to be the sort of uh, objectives for each of these teams over the next couple of minutes? Is 
Oh, actually, Baby Knight is probably dead now. The glimpse back. The crush going to connect. They do get a rolling bullet through to deal a good bit of damage, rather. Boulder Smash as Pablo trying to run away from Noya is going to be able to escape on 34 HP. They get the root as well, and, well, they're trying to run down Excalibur. He doesn't get the wall. Somehow Excalibur is getting away from a surged up Darkseer. Pablo with the escape as well. Nice play. Oh, that was really well done by Horde. Good, good play. The one thing they had going for them on the side of C9 was their supports were a lot higher level. Just the fact that Rise was like doing those neutral camps. He was down kind of soaking experience in the lane while uh, Ace is roaming around this jungle getting some farm up. But even like level 3 Disruptor, level 4 Slider are still making plays right now. They can't allow these kills to keep happening. And that was their one advantage is Rise will probably go down here again. Has no TP for 18, so no grave plans here. Yeah. And I mean, Horde just, you know. Dotting the eyes, crossing the T's, making sure that they don't get caught out by a Grave TP. They held that stun for the Slaughter until they knew they could kill him. And now a TP up Radiant's towards the top lane. Down. It looks like they want to try and pressure this dual off lane of Cloud9. Can Juggernaut bait it out well enough? I mean, when you look at the net worth, it doesn't even look that bad. Like, Ace is now up into his helm, but he also has 500 gold invested into an Iron Town. Right. That doesn't necessarily do that much for him in the long run. But... He, uh, he's not in the worst spot. I mean, considering he got completely forced that lane, he was essentially jungling the whole time. Things could be a hell of a lot worse for C9. Uh, yeah. They're still well within this one. Yeah, and I mean, also, you talked about the Dazzle having a little bit of a better time than he would otherwise. Like, the fact that he's died twice is not terrible. He has 21 CS as what was, you know, a position four, basically, Dazzle. So he is going to have some a little bit more farm than you normally would have on this guy. Already level six at this point. Yeah, that's this one of those level seven supports is Pablo. Yeah. Uh, they have the ulti. Oh, that extra little bit of damage, not quite enough. Woo! Uh, pops the stick charges at just the right time. And I think that that, uh, you know, Miss Boulder Smash ends up costing the kill. So able to escape. Yeah, Noya just not quite getting a couple of these ones. Earth Spirit always a tough hero to execute properly every single time, but just some mana calculations and stuff not quite working out for him. Ake leeching some experience up top here, just kind of following around with his ward, his ace jungles. Mm. Maybe hoping he can set something up, but he is still very underleveled. Uh, spending his whole time either in that tri lane down bottom or wandering through the Radiant side jungle. Yeah, that is a support you would definitely love to have it on, but he will snag himself a bounty room here. Yeah, that'll be good. You do oh, see. Maybe he won't. He's being so sneaky. Yeah. Really doesn't want him to know he's here. I, the, the rotation is coming in right now from Pablo, and it looks like they're going to try and get this kill. Ace, he's heading over towards the mid. Excalibur is getting gone on. Epicenter comes out. Zeal jumps forward. Burrow Strike on to two. Is it going to be enough damage, though? Looks like they are going to be able to find Hesjo. Yeah, Crush connects. They get the kill. This is going to end up coming at the cost of two heroes, though, so. Well, Ford ran down for a moment. They have another assassinate going out. There's the grave available if they wanted to use it. Ake jumped upon everything. He's gone. Three dead for Horde. Oh, he spent so long planning that top gank and trying to get all those rotations in order, and then Ace just says running mid. So all that <laughs> disruptor work kind of amounts to nothing. Then Sand King's in a weird spot, so he's make his way over. And the blink reveal does not go as planned. Ooh, nice burrow there. Rise gonna end up dropping from it though, I don't believe. And the crush comes through as well. Pablo needs to make his way up before Baby Knight takes him down, but you can overstep their bounds a little bit. You do have Juggernaut. Not enough mana right now for Omni Slash and the static storm down. They'd love to be able to bring down Ace right here. It does look like they're gonna be able to get it with the root down. Pablo running away again. Baby Knight is gonna be able to control him up. And again, not enough mana for Omni Slash, but they still do bring down that Sardar. Triple right now for Excalibur. Maybe looking for another. Does he get the root? Not quite there. Although Bear's pretty quick. Doesn't want to chase too far. Man, they were annihilating that sniper. It's yeah. so much damage to him so quickly. He he was Radiant's left alone throughout top. most of it though, which was a little bit sketchy. Ended up doing 2,500 damage, which is pretty much all of their damage. But yeah, Horde end up coming away a little bit the better for it. Yeah, now they have this Juggernaut Lone Druid well on top. So, Dragon Lance for Excalibur. Probably going to move into the Maelstrom next. All goes Dyer's according to plan. 
And uh, we see our next Sven game of the day. Still a hero that, uh, again, a lot of people aren't necessarily convinced on. I think would be a, a fair way to put it. Did have Alliance take a win with it, though, so... Can't be the worst thing ever. <laughs> no, yeah. Gets the... Ooh! Ugh! E-skill. That's not what you want to see. Oh, the stun comes through. He is going to end up being able to block the Rolling Boulder away. With the spinning Juggernaut as well as E-skill. And they miss the Burrow Strike. They find the kill nonetheless. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fought. It's a rather scrappy game. This kind of happens when there's these weird lanes where they break down so early and Sven is jungling <laughs> and they don't even like pressure the tower because they just want kills because the sand came with a blink. Oh, all right. Assassinate came out. Not going to be able to find that kill though. An epicenter just on top of Baby Knight's head. He is going down. So three dead in the matter of just about 45 seconds with the tier one tower gone as well. And yeah, you say scrappy, but. It's also feeling like Horde might start pulling away soon unless Cloud9 has an answer. Yeah, they just had to roast the slaughter on their team. But it's weird because everyone's still like trying to get into that base of items that you want as your hero. You're not really expecting to do much until you have them or something, but... Uh, the way Eskill just gets so far into this blink dagger so early, he just wants to kill. So he's like enabling his whole team to do things even though they weren't necessarily full up. Like Excalibur just now finished up the Dragon Lance after like two different fights and everything and then they go and clean up Roche. And... Oh, and Noya, they're looking for a fight right now. Magnetize is out. Can they reapply it to several of these heroes? Looks like at least for the moment they're keeping E-Skill out of this ace. Not feeling comfortable with how this fight is going. Trying to run away. They get the stun onto Aki. Static Storm has already been used and well, there they're going to pull him back in. So oh, Burrow Strike takes down Hester Joe. They are going to kill off E-Skill and Noya is still up there. They might be able to Find a couple more follow-ups to this Excalibur. Oh, good oh. stun! Uses the boulder already on the ground to take it. They had the follow-up from Ace. Slow down. Can they find the kill? They do break through that Aegis. East skills still here, trying to run away. They have the Juggernaut back into the midst of it as well, starting to bring down Noya. Baby Knight hitting away, trying to see if they can catch him. But they just take the bear. And maybe more? They have to run through the wall to get away from here. Ace has popped God Strength. Turns down to try and fight. They are going to find the burrow. On to Rise. Another boulder Starters goes through. almost back with Blink, too. And they have Glimpse. Uh, Ace in trouble. Rooted. Maybe going down. Rise. No mana for Grave. He did have wand charges, but doesn't want to use it as of yet. They Grave up Baby Knight. Now maybe he can TP out of there. It looks like it is going to happen. And Oh, nice Savage Roar. Oh, Baby Knight's gone. Hesta Joe this also is in some trouble. The dumbest game ever. <laughs> this is so silly. Hesta Joe is going to get ran down. The body blocks coming through. They just want to run at each other. They just want to run. Like, look at all these stones in the dire shrine. It's like, Earth Spirit Remnants are chilling <laughs> over here, all up here. It's littering, dude. Gotta get back to it. Oh. That was very strange. Uh, we're now at almost 30 kills in 15 minutes. And Horde are kind of starting to pull away again. Radiance top tower is under attack. All right. Well, we lose out on all our Aegis kind of gains here. Uh, we do have our mecha for Hesedo, so maybe they can fight this. Wasn't enough on the uh, the Regus in fight number seven or whatever the hell that was, but everyone, everyone's all situated. It'll do enough work. Oh, this could be the moment. Oh, they, Pablo, he jumped away. All right, they spot him out. There's the silence. The rest of Horde is coming in. East skill is there. He has the Burrow Strike on Anoya. They're starting to deal the damage. Stackstore is down, but already Ace is doing a lot. He ends up getting stunned in the midst of all of that. Noya graved up, applies the Magnetize again of Warwick, but... I think that he's still going to be in trouble. There's the vacuum back into the wall, trying to kill off Excalibur, but they just can't do it. And now e skill getting gone upon. Burrows away from Ace. Omni Slash. Was that actually Omni Slash? That was just illusions being dealt with. Yeah, damage. it was just illusions critting. What the? It sounded like Omni, though. <laughs> yeah, no. All right. I'll defend that. I heard Omni. You know, I would have believed you if I wasn't looking at the screen. Yeah, I, I don't look at the screen when I cast, so it's it's all good for me. As yeah, it, it, looks it like shows. I did so I've taken only uh, they take one extra kill over the top of them. Nice little play there. Wow. That oh man, that that's a risky fight for Cloud Nine. They're running into a team that has two blink daggers up so early in the game. Uh, when you're at this kind of awkward point where you have max skills or at least close to it, and so the damage starts to be maximized from every hero. 
but you don't have any of those stat items to come up yet either. So every single skill is so valuable. As woo, you're getting a little bit of EU lag here. Is uh -oh. that just me? Hey, I'm I'm looking all good and pretty here. Oh, okay, good. Seems to have subsided there. But uh, either way, like two blinks this early? That's terrifying. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised they were able to take that fight so well. Yeah, it's sort of nuts. I, I just, I guess it was the start of the fight. I, I don't know exactly why Pablo blinked into the trees there, but it ended up sort of working out a little bit because had he just walked up that ramp, then I think they both get stunned in a line by the Earth Spirit probably. So not as bad as it could have been probably for Horde. Oh, certainly so. And look at the deny up top here. Dyer's yeah. top tower has been denied. So break it down for me. What are we looking at over the next couple of minutes as far as, well, I need attack. to hold that. Gorick, stun, silenced. That's a really nice pickoff if they're able to get it, and it looks like it should happen now. Rolling boulder forward. Uh, come on. Oh, oh. Pearl, are you? What? They're not going to get him! Static Storm down on top of Hestijo! Oh no! Oh no! That really hurts. That was supposed to happen the other way around. Burrow onto Ace. He's going down. Oh, jeez. Alright, well, when you asked that question, I was going to say all that matters is getting, I would say, the Blink Dagger up on the decks here next so they can start moving around the map and trying to take these big fights or defend their towers using that and put the threat of the Wombo Combo into the side of Horde. But uh, then they went all in on a fight, and now they're in big trouble because he was like 300 gold away from his blink, and now he's about 600 gold away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, that's I, some scary stuff. That really is. Radiant's bottom that's, tower is under it, attack. It's what you need at this point too. Like we've seen how much the vacuum wall can do in the midst of this, but like if, you, if you're not able to get into the Radiant's position, and they don't really have the like greatest setup for it unless Noya makes a play like Noya is the one who's going to be able to do it but I guess the only other one would really be Sven but he sort of has to run into it also yeah, it's just lack of mobility what have yeah you? man that's two blinks they need to farm up right now which is pretty scary at least they do have this gem it's very nice on rise you know kind of a risky spot with it but trying to establish some control trying to give an area for ace to farm up because he has a lot of work to do both him and Baby Knight have about 3k gold. They need to catch up to these dire cores. Coming out from Hordes, Excalibur moves in towards his Mjolnir. Mm. And Gork, uh, yeah, he will head in for the full Manta too, which is almost done. In fact, it's quite finished if that's what he wants. Maybe he's changed his mind. Yeah, he just picked it up. It's coming out to oh, him. There it is. Oh, that's good. And, I mean, <sighs> yeah, it's just... It, it feels like if you give them a couple more minutes, then they're going to be able to get into that fighting spot. But now with around the 7,500 gold lead, they've got that item advantage that's like, it's not just money at this point. It's actual utility in the team fights. Like Mjolnir on Excalibur, on top of having the plus 65 damage from his talent tree, he's just going to be so hard to deal with in these fights. Yeah, and they have Blink Four Staff on Sand King and Slider. This is just like our game earlier with Liquid, where both GH and Mind Control, it's like having two offlaners. Yeah. And they've achieved the same thing here. There's only a 1300 net worth difference between the two of them, as Poverty Ake uh, allows them to flourish, buying up all the other support items, sitting on nothing but Arcanes and a Magic Wand. The Horde were watching that last game between Liquid and Cloud9, picked up a couple tips, potentially. Slider God, dude. What a hero. Yeah, pick Slardar, that's the tip. <laughs> Win Dota. <laughs> uh, Good enough for me. Well, they got a Blink Burrow. They do have a lot of damage coming out. Trying to run away from them for the moment. Baby Knight is there as well. Pablo catches a stun onto two in the back lines. And Ace is going to be controlled by a Static Storm, but still fine for the moment. Omni Slash came out and was able to finish off the Dark Seer at the very least. Meanwhile, East Gill getting assassinated. They end up canceling it. And Baby Knight trying to run away. Shadow Bladed out. As Rise is gone, Ace trying to man up against this. It doesn't look like it's going to be enough, though. He turns, he fights, he almost able to kill him off, but it doesn't quite happen. Noya also going to get crushed, going to get killed. Gem on the ground, and only Baby Knight is left alive. Oh, man. That gem pickup. It, it was risky. And now it has fully... Swatch over, swapped over to the other side. That hurts so much, actually. That's like, you can just add that onto the net worth swap, too, right? Like, it's yeah. 900 gold off one team, add it onto the other. 
Ugh. I'm sure they're so happy about that right now. <laughs> uh, especially because he just bought a uh, Shadow Blade on Baby Knight, so he's just like, dude, are you serious? Yeah. yeah. He's just gonna do this to me like that, but... Nice setup from Horde. They were lying in wait at that tower. Focus onto the Sven, uh, force it all defensive spells, and then uh, that nice double crush too from Pablo was huge yeah. in the Omni Slash. Absolutely. Well, Excalibur in the meantime is just going to be able to run away. Oh, he dodges the assassinate as well with true form. Wait, is that still a thing that can be done? Yes, it's still not patched. Okay. It's supposed to be patched. It was yeah, literally right? changed in the patch notes, but they accidentally did it to recall bear instead of true form. Okay. Interesting. So now recall bear does not destroy projectiles even though it's supposed to. Okay. And now true form does even though now it's supposed to not. They just, you know, they, they make it's it's fine. I'm sure. <laughs> it's been like so long though. <laughs> How does something get fixed? I don't understand some of the changes that happen. Yeah. Like there's a, a post like quick cast doesn't work. Help Valve save Reddit. Yeah. And then it gets fixed in like an hour. And then people have talked about this bug like since the patch. Yeah. Oh, it's a little bit weird. It's also, I mean, it's really important because it's a long, long transform time, which allows you to, you know, juke stuff pretty easily. Like it's way easier than a Manta dodge. Um, but anyways, oh, it just just dointing in general, actually. Excuse me. So it wouldn't matter anyways. Um, yeah, well, I mean, it used to be like this really long, like it was pretty high skill when you got some crazy little disjoint, but now it's not nearly as bad. Yeah. Well, does look like now. Smoke oh my God, movement. He's so firm, dude. It's the only a hurricane pike. It's disgusting. No. This might be the play, though. They are weaved up and heading in towards Roche. The bear is going to go check it out. Smoke not breaking. Work is there. They spot out a oh, couple. Oh, they know. They saw the damage onto the creep, I think. Uh, oh, ace. All right, crush follow-up. Vacuum wall onto four with the static storm down as well. A huge crush comes through. A lot of damage being now out. It might be enough to kill off Horde, but they've only lost the disruptor so far. And now, oh, there's going to be the kill onto the Sand King. Gem on the ground as well. Pablo finds Baby Knight. Amp damage on top of him as well. Excuse me. Corrosive Haze as Estejo takes down that Slardar Rise, trying to run away to the best of his abilities. A stun onto two. Oh, the boulder kick as well. And now they found Ezekiel stunned up as well as the well, urn on top of him. Very nicely played right there by Cloud9. Beautifully executed oh. team fight. Classic Cloud9. They're back, baby. Hesta <laughs> Joe God. Dude, this guy is so good at, at Darks here. Like, He's been doing this for the past, I don't even know, two years probably, playing Darks here and just getting these unbelievable vacuum walls off. Combos it up there this time, with the Static Storm. Mm, feels good. Excuse me, I, I, I did say Static Storm, but that was actually Disrupt on the other team, so they didn't get that silence off. Oh, it was, yes, it was, that, is, that is an excellent point. It was the silence from the Earth well Spirit. Well said. Thank you, I, I'm, I'm terrible. That's what we're going to end up leaving it at at this point. But E-Skill in the meantime, I mean, he loses the, the gem right there. He wanted to go back in it for a second, but, you know, Sven tracking him down. And we talked about the need for these Blink Daggers on the Cloud9 team and showing off, you know, what you can do once you end up having them. Yeah, and he ends up getting, like, a triple kill because he's throwing these Iron Shells on top of Earth Spirit, on top mm -hmm. of Ace, too, and just uh, putting all that magic damage. And uh, But, yeah, all that really matters when you play Darks here is you have that melee core that you really want with the Iron Shells. Or you try and get someone who combos up with your initiations. And having these crazy kicks and silences is just doing so much work. I mean, you saw, like, they were in the Static Storm. So, obviously, you know, most of them on Cloud9 are being silenced up there. But having that silence falling through the other way so they can't actually capitalize on the Static Storm. Ooh. Big plays there from Noya. This is really scary. They want to go and fight this right now. Uh, but they're not going to be able to get there in time. And a DD rune now up as well on the Lone Druid. Yeah, they can't actually go for this. This is... That really hurts. They would have loved to take that fight, I think, inside the Roche pit. Yeah, that feels kind of bad when you just like won that big fight in mid and so you can't go for Roche, but... Playing uh, a little bit patient, a little bit cautious. They know that Excalibur is still disgustingly strong, has a DD, so probably wouldn't have ended up very well from them if they went into that. Yeah. Well, the movement now towards the mid lane. Shrines. No longer a thing in this world for the Radiant team. As Ace, yeah, gonna get chased here. They spot out where he is, and a little bit unfortuitous. He is going to be controlled and probably killed off very shortly. Defusal blade out as well. Oh god, he is. Mm, that hurts. It's not the size of the sword, Sven. It's how you use it. Yep. 
Uh, sad. And, you know, you get this flourish of hope. This is really his classic C9. They're really taking the name a little bit too seriously, I feel like, you know? Yeah. But it's okay. They have Derek's here. High ground defense, name the game. Wombo combo with Sven. He has the buyback, but he has no god strength, so this is kind of scary. Even when trying to use it, you'd really love to drive them off without having to burn your Sven. But with an Aegis, it seems unlikely. Yeah, this is really... Battle of the Snipers, dude. Yeah, we talked about it. This sniper's winning. This sniper's definitely winning. Uh, that being said, they're taking a lot of damage from this. It looks like, you know, Juggernaut brought down to below half HP, but the healing ward immediately there again, and they are going to be fine. Yep, and guess what? Tower's gone. And how do you oh. deal with this? Like, how do you like it, Sniper? <laughs> it, it feels pretty good to watch this happen, honestly. Still That's have a lot of pent-up aggression against this hero. And to see him be so helpless in here while his buildings dies, it's quite good. Yeah. That's true. Nobody likes Sniper, I don't think. No, we can all agree on that, I feel like. so. Baby Knight does, but he also likes Viper, so... Yeah, he likes every disgusting hero. I, uh, I will say that it's felt like Cloud9, like they had these moments and their team fight uh, sort of potency. They, they're they they're really good at working together in the midst of these team fights and, and taking them uh, over Horde. But it's just, it, it's almost as if they're in a position where it doesn't even matter. Like they can't get into a position to allow themselves to fight. It's probably going to look uh, quite a bit like those, um, well, I guess it was Alliance versus Horde game, too, where yeah. you're just moving around the whole map. You, you know that the best chance for C9 is that it's that push, where you want to try and catch on the big vacuum. So try and force C9 to fight in these open skirmish areas where it's much more difficult to get those big combos off. It worked once in the mid lane, but that's the reason why you go all crazy, because you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe they just did that, you know? Mm -hmm. So if they can manage to do it again, that'll help them claw their way back in the game. But Horde are staying close to each other but not too close that it's dangerous for the that sort of a smoke initiation and the bkb now up on the ace we might see them go uh, a little bit crazy here he is not going to save for buyback as sven that's usually not that valuable anyway yeah i i think that it's it's almost at that point now where you just have to go all in on everybody just to try and win a fight and like it's not so terrible like they haven't lost any of the the barracks at this point but because of the lead and because of the heroes that you got on Horde, it, they just deal damage so quickly to those towers. And everybody from Cloud9 up towards the top, Dyer's top they have TPs? Yeah, they do. It's a good move. <laughs> <laughs> Never gets old, honestly. Uh, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, they're coming on back now, but oh, the Tier 3 tower is already oh, going to be down make by sure the they don't get, get there. Glimpsed. Oh, Aki's actually pretty far back. That could have been really bad. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised he didn't move up for that. Oh, God, that would have been so funny. I'm so disappointed in you right now, Aki. I love you. <laughs> but I really wanted to laugh at someone at that moment. I so mean, we'll just be happy with another so tower. So they just take the tier three sort of back out again. Do you think that they need to wait for that next round of items before they really try and make a concentrated push up? Or is it just going to mid and then that's when they go for the push? Like, are they waiting for anything uh, Honestly, here? you just wait for C9 to screw up, and, okay. and if they don't screw up, you just wait till Roche. Yeah. You can see um, C9 too, just ensuring they have a sentry inside the base, because that, that's the most dangerous kind of a ward right now, if you're the Radiant side. If they can tell that you're turtling inside your base and you're not out smoking, then you know that they're getting full aggression and uh, efficiency all over the map. But right now, in a moment like this, where they're, like, this wave's just sitting here, Although there's a shrapnel, which might make them think, like, oh, where are they? But uh, they're well aware they're smoked up somewhere, so they're just going to chill. Yeah. I guess that we're also pretty close to Scotty on Lone Druid. Uh, only needs about 400 more gold for that. So if they can wait for that one to fight, then it would be pretty good. Um, and, you know, you got Noya here. He's picked up the gem. They had it back after that last engagement. And could start to try and shut down a bit more of the vision. You don't have the best vision in the world right now for a uh, Horde. Although that'd be all right. Enough to see where Cloud9 is. So we're gonna try and again put this pressure on the top lane. Hmm. Ooh. Some sort of a sneaky play, perhaps. 
Uh, he's not really in a great Dying position to actually jump onto them yet. He will be able to find Baby Knight with this, though, and oh, Burrow's on to Ace. The Crush is there as well. Vacuum. Oh, wall, a little bit off the mark. A good Yule Scepter's going to be able to control him. Uh, they're on top of Baby Knight in the back. They need to be able to control a Gork. They are going to get the Omni Slash off on the Rise, but he tanks through the whole thing and then just walks away. So Omni down at this point, as is Ace Wall. Is stuck in no man's land. Well, show Ace, yeah, it's getting jumped upon. There's another Burrow Strike. The Static Storm is on top of him as well. A good crush from Pablo, but they do have the Assassinate out and online. Noya gets pulled back in again, and now they have the Vacuum <laughs> onto three. That's decent, but not a ton of follow-up. They are going to be able to kill them off with the Iron Shell, though, and a double for Baby Knight. Maybe going to be able to find some more. Excalibur being revealed. The damage, they get the Grave off. Nicely played there. Can he run him down? It doesn't quite look like it, and he is going to die to tower now. Okay. Nice heal coming in from Rise. So Cloud9, take it back in a nice little combo there. Yeah, they had to use everything to try to bring down that Sven. He was just kind of zoning them out while his BKB was up, and then when it ran out, and he's just running on back, uh, getting kinetic fielded, and then saved again from the Greaves, just coming out, keeping up as long as possible, and they were pretty spent. So that whole time, they're focusing in onto Ace. Baby Knight's cleaning up the heroes that weren't in that part of the fight. And a nice little run back for them. Yeah, huge win. Mm. And now, Sniper, he can build into the Hurricane Pike at this point if he needs to. At this stage, do you start thinking more about buyback and making sure you save a hold of it, considering Roche is coming up, or...? Uh, yeah, definitely a Sniper. Uh, his is very important this game. Okay. I mean, the Guardian Greaves, too, for the Darkseer on top of the Crimson Guard. He is quite farmed, uh, and it's just more survivability for his entire squad here. It's starting to feel almost as if Horde are lacking the damage that they need to bring these guys down. Well, we'll see if they keep having a problem with that. Generally not too much of an issue for this lone druid. Maybe once he gets to, to uh, well, I guess he already, he just picked up that Scotty. Now he'll going to be going defensive, so maybe they will run into a damage issue. Uh, he still didn't have the full combination onto like two or three heroes or anything in that fight as well, so maybe that's why I was lacking a little bit. Gork not getting like major combos going really either, so I think they they're still okay on the damage. I don't think they're crazy beefy yet on the side of C9. A lot of it coming down to graves and just war cries and stuff. But if one hero falls, that can all just kind of collapse. Yeah. Well, and I guess oh, battle in the pit. This is pretty epic, dude. I don't want you to miss this. Oh, look at him! Oh my God, this could. Who knows who could win this one? I can't believe they're both just leaving you here. This is excellent. The highest quality entertainment of of your life. Wow. It, is it looks really other. good in showcase mode, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm checking it out right here. The battle uh, in the pit. Oh, oh no. Oh, that, that is, is cheating. cheating. Oh, come on now. Everybody go report Jug. Gork, this is, this is unacceptable. Wait, are they going to come help him out? Are they going to bring in their entire team to go <laughs> kill that one? <laughs> wow, this is an epic purge creep battle. All right, down it goes. They grab another creep. He's sending in the frost roll, the big guns. All right. It's like WWE, man. Royal oh, who's Rumble. that? Oh, it's the troll. It's coming in. <laughs> <laughs> what, all right, Just what, needs a chair. Holy crap. All right. They're actually about to do this. They kick out his kill. They messed that up a little bit. Oh, man. That's really unfortunate. But now the chase. They're going to look Ace for is getting purged. He's it's in the creep. trouble. The creep did it. Omni slashed down as well. He's going to end up dropping. Oh, my God. The Ogre God Frost here, Mage. Creep. He kills off his, his brother in arms, and well, now they end up getting the crush on the Hester Joe that contains Sven. Trying to run, but can he actually escape from this? Nice Yule Scepter as well from the Sand King. There's going to be the Burrow Strike, and well, they have some heals. Grave coming out as well. It looks like he is going to end up dropping. Oh, Noya not able to save, and now he's going to end up going down as well. They get the Magnetize off one to two, but it's not nearly enough. So Horde take down three and now it looks like they're just gonna end up taking the barracks like you have a buyback on Sven at this point but I guess the plus side there isn't really a creep wave there's one coming in now and this probably is gonna be the proverbial nail in the coffin almost yeah this one's pretty painful oh baby night. On baby night all right they are gonna pull him back in though glimpse grave down trying to bring him and it's pretty much gonna be it they have the buyback on both him as well as the Sven. Sven not using it as of yet, so wanting to make sure that he has some semblance of way to get back into this game here. And 
They're slowing down the push at least a little bit right now of Excalibur. Glyph comes out as well. That's a melee Rex, dude. Killed that so fast. But they saved it. Yeah. Still alive. Ake? Ooh. Good bit that of damage. That's one thing. They don't have any sustain. Yeah. No urn. Um, no mech hero. So all they have is the healing ward. And once that's spent, times are tough. Bottom lane is being pushed in. Looks like Hestijo will be able to finish this one off as well. So creeps are going to get out of there. Fortune. Meanwhile, Horde... They're, they're winning these fights, but it's not as clean as potentially it could be unless they get that nice pickoff at the start, and they didn't get Roche. So, yeah, maybe a little bit of decision-making there was a little bit sketchy, so we have another paddle in the pit. Burrow? Rise? Crushed? Amp damage? Wow, they're terrified. For good reason, but Rise is just so happy. <laughs> they're going to glimpse him back in again. He just wants to leave. He's still very survivable here, and now Pablo, they reveal onto him. They didn't have the kinetic field to place this down either, though. Dark light. Mm. Uh, all right, Baby Knight just kills off Ake, and now rolling away again. They have Ezekiel, there's the stun onto Ace. More damage coming out from Excalibur, but they've already lost one yet again. And they've chased them off. This Are they going to try and take this fight? They can potentially. Noya's down there. They have the wall that's already been dropped. Pablo. Oh, good catch now. Ace dropping very low. Needs to pop the BKB and turn to fight, but just can't ratch onto him. And now Pablo's going to start to take the damage now. They end up finding that kill on the other side of the fight. Baby Knight gets brought down by the Juggernaut and Ake. Oh, and drew it. Lives. Oh, they caught Rise. Nice play right there as well with the, well, Invis being broken by the Savage Roar. And that's Roche. These fights are so crazy because both teams, like, you don't want to establish a fight area unless your sniper is the one in control. Yeah. So, it, it, like, if Lone Druid's not sitting on a high ground pelting at someone, you don't really want to fight there. And everyone's just, like, running away to these weird spots. And bring down Baby Knight. Nice way for that one to go as well as Excalibur finding Noya and just kind of focusing him down using the root and not offering up all that Earth Spirit control. Now Roche, now the final push. No buyback on the sniper. They know that is not coming back anytime soon. And down the mid, we will likely go. Uh, Ace just does not feel as tanky as he needs to be in these fights, it feels like. And he also doesn't have his Chrysalis in there right now. Uh, we'll see if he puts that back into his inventory before the fight starts, but that could make yeah, a sure pretty big will. difference. Let's keep it selected as... Uh-oh. Yeah, that's... Mm. Ace, Ace a little tilted. That's This is not what needs to happen right now. Well, we'll, we'll see if it ends up making the difference. There will not be crits right here from Sven. Gork is already through the melee barracks in the top lane. Now jumping forward, vacuum wall, a lot of damage, but is it going to be enough? They're not able to bring down Gork. Oh, he still ends up getting the kill. Uh, it's a little bit sketchy, but fine. There's the surge forward, wanting to find a little bit more. Oh, they glimpsed some way, though. That's the Joe. There's the forward. They have the stun. Ake going to get caught out, and that should probably be the death of him. Stun again. Pushing Ake away. Maybe it's here, too, so they have a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah now Pablo. Uh, okay. There's the, he's got the Shadow Blade. I will say, in, in defense of, of Ace right here, there's been a couple of weird interactions. He does finally put it into the, his inventory, but there's been a couple of weird interactions with items as they combine in your backpack if you have an open slot or not. Like, oh, you, yeah. it, where you have something that's there, but then you had like another thing in your backpack, and for some reason it combines into your backpack. Yeah, let's get some weird. Some weird interactions indeed, but oh, Jug done. They don't want to uh, force any sort of, or rather, burn a buyback, so that's fine. They, they still have bots here too, so this doesn't open up shrines or anything. Not a massive victory here for the Radiant, but it does get them out of their base, get some farming, getting some more gold coming their way. Well, in the vision also, you take a look at it, they've actually got a pretty good scope of the Horde jungle right now, whereas on the other side, you take a look at Horde, and they're pretty blind. They have one ward that's up over here. Uh, but I would imagine that will get... They have a gem on Dazzle. I guess that they're not going to pass by that area right now. 
Man, that jam has seen some shit. It's been all <laughs> over this game. Like, it has been every which way. I yeah. wonder if that's... Is that his on E-Skill, too? I don't know. That's that's actually just E-Skill's gem, so... Okay. Both teams owning their own respective gems again here. Yeah. Alan, now getting ready for another push. Again, it's only one set of barracks that are down, as well as a Tier 3 tower in the bottom lane. Pablo, looking for the initiation, finds it onto two. He might have bit off more than he can chew. We'll see what they're going to do. Noya, he's not going to get caught. Although, there's oh, the glimpse back. Oh, my splink away. All right, Abyssal Blade should give them a little bit of an edge in this next fight, I would assume. Everything's up for everybody, except for Weave, but not the the biggest deal. could certainly help, but... What's our what's our major issue here? The uh, the BKB for Excalibur. Yeah, he... We are not getting one of those, so... <laughs> He's got the Aegis instead. Yeah. He, he will be the one who just tries to sit high ground and annihilate these buildings. It's better than a BKB. Let's you come back to life instead of keeping you alive. What more could you want? Yeah, they're going to push in here, though. It doesn't feel like this game is actually going to be over super soon. I mean, I guess that if, if Horde win a fight pretty handedly, they can, but uh, there's buybacks on Radiant Team. There's a lot of ability to push out the creep waves. You know, Darkseer, great for that, without having to expose himself, really. And eventually we're getting towards an Earth Spirit Aghanim Scepter as well. Oh, God. If, if this high ground couldn't get any more annoying, that would actually be so absurd. Do you if, if you can get Ace in and then bring him back out after they spend everything while Baby Knight's just pelting away the whole time, that's going to be disastrous. Mm. Sniper is getting closer to that really high damage potential. Like, he's already got a decent amount of damage, but... Is there anything else that you'd really like on him at this point? Does he go BKB, or do, do you feel like it's more important to go, like, you know, a Daedalus or something like that? Uh, I guess it depends on what everyone else is itemizing with. Yeah. Uh, there's no mobility on Rise, so depending on these fights, it could be difficult for him to get in range of Baby Knight. Could potentially even just see, like, some players would buy um, a Blink in kind of that mid-game for Sniper Baby Knights. Eyeing up into the butterfly, so a nice little bit of mobility as well as adding on some damage and survivability. Mm. This is Wolf faithfully follows him around the base. <laughs> yeah. These are the hardest games to win, I feel like, when you're the dire, though, in a lot of circumstances. You just can't push in, can't blow it because their high ground is disgusting. One vacuum into uh, any of these stuns is going to be disastrous. And Noya just calming them up with the Earth Spirit. Ooh, a movement out as well. They are going to spot these wards, I think. Yeah, they do have the gem, but they don't want to de-ward them as of yet. Uh, right now, Horde think that they're safe. This could go really badly oh, for them. Way. A little bit weird. They stun on his heal, and they have the static storm down already. They're able to get him out. So now two of them caught in there. They're trying to bring down the Juggernaut. There is the Omni Slash onto Ace. They also have the stun. Oh, good Glimmer Cape, though. Going to keep him alive. Still has to show there. They drop the wall down on top of Excalibur. Dealing damage to Baby Knight. Baby Knight does fall. There's now no the Aegis. stun trying to bring him low. Can they do it? They're not quite there on top of him as of yet. On the backside, the Juggernaut already killed him off. So they have been able to bring down Excalibur. As you said, that was worn off at this point. Ake okay, now able to get away, but this is going to be a dead Sand King, I believe. The illusion getting created of that uh, of the lone druid actually ended up doing a ton of damage in that fight also yeah that's actually disgusting well considering that fight started off pretty much as bad as possible for the radiant th that's a very bad sign for horde like yeah. ace blinked up north when they were all to the east so he missed out on his initiation chance and then two of them got caught in a static storm that came out from ake and still they won that fight well, and the other thing that's sort of interesting about it is that, like, it did cost a buyback from Baby Knight. I don't know how much... Did you see how much he actually got to do in the fight? It felt like he got there right as it was ending. Yeah, it did kind of look at that at the I'll end, too. To I was actually just noticing the, the buyback part, too. So that that is kind of an issue, I suppose. Yeah. With next Roche coming up as well. Well, Sven building towards what looks to be a, uh, a Bloodthorn as well. Um, is going to be uh, at it pretty shortly at this point, which is going to be another really strong power spike. Uh, this lone druid build, how does it fare going into the later stages of the game? Like, do you eventually just start building items onto your spirit bear? 
I get. I think he's still like full focus. Your hero. Yeah. Like you, you would get a moon shard unless there's something super valuable that you can just throw on your bear. Yeah. But for the most part, you probably just focus on like transitioning stuff. Uh, his particular build doesn't really matter. There's no like basher or something to to right. hand over. I guess that's true. So that's just... never gonna happen for a ranged druid. Yeah. I don't know. I, I haven't got to witness the twelve slot druid, but I'm ready for it. I'm down. Oh, they found Pablo. They have the gem. Very low. They have the rest of the side of Horde coming in right now, though, and they need to be careful. That Burrow Strike is available. He's Gil, looking for the catch. Not going to be able to find it. And he's got the Shiva's Guard recipe, but there's not a, a, as much remover, or a maneuverability as you have with that Aghanim Scepter build. He spies out, too. He gets rid of his buyback, probably just because... Baby Knight doesn't have his anyway, and again, he's a Sven, so if God's Strength is down, you feel pretty lackluster anyway, and uh, often towards that Bloodthorn. Yeah. So currently, there is Manta on Jug. He can dispel it. We have the BKB on Excalibur. He doesn't have to worry about it, but those supports in the back line. Mm. Someone like Ake. Still not a big deal, though. Like, if he gets Bloodthorn, he can't go Scepter. Based. Yeah. And try and survive through it that way. I guess that it depends also upon sort of the timing of all of those things. If he's able to wait out the BKB for Excalibur, the Manta coming from the Jug, then obviously you have a, an opening into it. But they're probably expecting the Bloodthorn at this point. I'm ready for some Royal Rumble in the pit. Let's go. Got a hell bear being sent in from the Radiant. Who's going to represent the Dire side? Who will be <laughs> your champion? Yeah. It doesn't look like they want to send anybody. This is, again, unacceptable. <laughs> All right. They said Gork. He wins. Yeah, that'll happen pretty quickly. But that does, of course, show off that you know, Horde is over there getting ready to try and take down Roshan. And Jeez, for a second there, I was like, who the hell is a Lincoln? But I realized it was just Rosh. All right. We're good. Everybody, everybody chill out, guys. <laughs> Yeah, this is one of those moments as well where, you know, Noya, he was ready to take a big fight right there. Drop the magnetize. Damn, dude. That He's was intense. Not afraid. The face roll. Uh, Ace. All right, Burrow. We'll do it. And now Glimpse back again. Ooh. <laughs> this is one of those moments where it can get really scary very quickly. Excalibur is going to start hitting it away. They get the kick. It connects. Roche has fallen very quickly. They need to be able to get here really quick. The vacuum onto two, and well, the silence as well already out. Magnetize also down, and the Ghost Scepter through all of that. Omni Slash not doing nearly enough damage. They throw down the Static Storm. Rise still waiting to go in. On the other side, Ace not able to find anybody with this. He does finally connect onto Pablo over here towards the river. It looks like they're all going to run away, but they have already been able to chase down and kill off that Slardar. So at the end of the day, Slaughter goes down for the Earth Spirit. Nice jump away by E-Skill. Is going to be able to, for the moment, escape. But Excalibur is now on top of him. The rest of the team, vacuum wall. They need the stretch. Whoa. It's so much damage. Excalibur drops a double for him. And well, now Gork is going to end up being able to take down that Sven. But on top of him, they're going to kill off Ake. Maybe even going to be able to find the kill onto this Juggernaut. Shrines up, wants to fight. You have the Grave in the area. They're looking for the follow-up, but... Might just be time to take down Roshan or run back home because their entire base is being pressured in. Yeah, Baby Knight needs to be here. And this barracks in the bottom lane might go down as well. Pablo's yeah, buying back. They no can't take this. Structure's lost. Yeah, this is a nice play. Just buying back on the slider, knowing that Sniper's there. So the heroes that are currently hitting Rosh, not very strong. All right. Rise is going to be the one that goes in. And Can you imagine if they killed Baby Knight here? Oh, God. They might they just do them. it. They, they missed the dust. Ooh. He's invis again in a second, and yeah, they're gonna get Roche. Wow. Well, that they ended up giving Pablo the Aegis and Gork ate the cheese, which I don't think was intentional. Or maybe, well, I'm not sure what happened there, but either way, the cheese was munched. Okay. Uh, the Jug is now looking down bottom lane to see if he can take down Rise. He needs to go for it. Oh, yeah, he's just gone. Abyssal, Blink Dagger, Juggernaut's pretty good. And you do a buyback on the, the Dazzle, but at this point, you really don't want to have to use buyback on anybody. Plus, he gave up Gem. 
which was huge. Oh god. And, and this is the thing, like, Sven has cooldowns. Lone Druid, no cooldowns. Mm. Other than bear, I suppose, but I mean who cares about that bear? Yeah. You're doing a lot of damage at this point on all of these heroes if they try and break high ground, but Baby Knight can't be everywhere at once. They need these other heroes to be able to push out these lanes. He's just gonna go up here to take care of it. That is so frustrating to deal with. Both the high ground defense as well as the Manta Siege. Even, uh, like they have this Blink Dagger onto Gork, so maybe that'll be enough, but it's very difficult for Excalibur to find his way into dealing damage in that back line mm. where Baby Knight's gonna be found. Like, Baby Knight's never gonna be in a spot where he can get glimpsed into, like, a precarious position from Ake. So the only hope is if you can, like, Blink Crush Baby Knight and somehow have him facing the right way that you can force Staff him further out and maybe have a chance there. Because he's still rocking no defensive items besides the, uh, the Hurricane Pike, so... Yeah. But even then, if you're putting all those resources into doing that, then you have to worry about the Dazzle, so... Right. In the end, it, it kind of comes down to like a high ground slow siege, which is also very dangerous against this Darkseer. Well, and the other thing about this, too, is that With now... Refresher. We're looking at the, uh, him about to be able to pick up a Manta style, so it's, it is one other defensive item that he can be able to pick up. Um, has all of the components for it in just a second. Darkseer has Refresher as well. We might see some really big plays coming out there. There is the Manta Cell. Excalibur pops BKB for this one. Like Rose Strike's gonna be there. They're trying to bring him back in. Have been able to find it. Ace pops his own BKB. Omni slashes out on Noya, but taking a lot of creeps as well. It does look like Noya's gonna get graved alive for the moment. The Refresher has been popped for Hesajo now and chasing oh down. They kill off Excalibur. <laughs> big plays there. Ake, everybody pulled back in. They destroy them. Ultra kill for Ace and trying to find some more Noya looking now for Aki, but off on the other side, it might be enough though. A 6,000 gold swing off of Dude, that fight. That lone druid illusion is a monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And well, right now your buyback is on Jug as well as lone druid, but if they start running down mid, I didn't. I thought he got that melee racks when he BKB'd. Yeah. I can't believe that lived. It must have been very low. It's going to be healed back up shortly. And you don't have boots to travel on Darks here, so he's going to have to get up to get back here. Yeah, but they pushed out all three lanes too. So there's no worry about a backdoor play because I'm, I'm sure that's a threat when it comes to Excalibur and this lone druid. Oh. He also still has buyback and BKB now returning. Well, what was oh. once looking really, really good for Horde is now Dyer's starting to tilt out. into the favor of, could it be anybody else? Cloud9. Oh, one true sniper, could it be? There can only be one. Can Baby Knight save the hero and the most annoying Seager and Defender? God, look at him go. And he's got that Manta still. MKB is on the way shortly after this as well. And Excalibur, oh, you don't want to step up to that. All right, Dyer's barracks down. Has fallen. Yeah, they just sack it. They don't go for any sort of a glimpse play. Let them out. Don't want to try and force a bad fight for them. I gotta say, even that last fight, although it didn't go Horde's way, I thought, okay, again, he keeps throwing these static storms right on top of the vacuums to try and interrupt the combinations coming from C9, mm -hmm. which, um, you know, it's doing the best of it. it. It can, but it's still not enough. And now tier two, shrines. Dazzle picks up a Solar Crest as well. So ultimate and defensive items. And you see the vision right now for Horde. They realize where they're at, but Cloud9 has a little bit of an advantage there. Pablo is up front and center. They are going to be able to get the initiation on Vacuum Wall on it too. The damage coming out from Ace. He takes them down. Omni Slash is there, but I don't think it's going to be enough to bring them down in the midst of this. Baby Knight ends up getting Abyssal, but there's the Hurricane Pike. The chase continues. Killing spree for Baby Knight. Trying to find some more here. Excalibur running for the hills. The tier two is going to be down. They chase down Gork. Oh, there's the catch. There's the stun, and there is the kill. Dominating streak for Hesta Joe. No buyback for anybody except for this juggernaut. And now it's time to go high ground. Cloud9 might just have done it. Ace even buys back too, just to make sure there's no backdoor attempt in the top lane with like weird stuns coming out or something. Excalibur shrining up. They're waiting for Ace to push out this bottom lane and then he's gonna come join him, I'm sure. And there he goes, ready to start to take the fight. And they what? probably just sacked two lanes. 
a 10,000 gold lead at one point is now dropped down to going into the favor of Cloud9. Got Mueller on Ace, and I don't know if they can deal with this. They just gotta get back, wait for everyone, try and take one last fight. Yeah. Well, it's kind of now or never. You got four seconds left until Slarter, but this tower is gonna be down so quickly, and now they try and get their oh, Joyce off, but oh, Excalibur, he's jumped upon, and BKB running 34 <laughs> HP. Oh, is he, it gonna be ulted. enough? He's they ulted, but they end up breaking it. it. Nicely played there. All right, Static Storm dropped down as well onto Ace. Noia trying to run away. They're popping all the shrines that they possibly can. Ace is dropping low. The vacuum wall combo. They have another one available after the refresh has already been used. And there's the X marks the spot coming out from that wall. And now on the other side, though, Excalibur is there. He also is able to throw out the Savage Roar. But look at Baby Knight. He is not wasting any time hitting away at these guys. If they can bring him down, maybe they have a chance. The buyback from Excalibur is there. A four-person Burrow Strike. But oh, still, so Baby Knight, they end up getting him. Excalibur on the double kill. They might actually be able to completely turn this back around. Grave comes out, buyback on Baby Knight. They try to bring down Hestijo. Oh, the crush just off the mark. And still the barracks stand. Baby Knight's TP'd into the mid lane. This is definitely an all-in play. Slardar, Lone Druid, against the world. They're all healing up, though. Hestijo, Grave's doing work. Just that aura. It seems Ooh. impossible. There's the crush. Excalibur. They have a shrine. They're going to pop it now, trying to stay alive. He pops his BKB to run away. There is Pablo here, and Excalibur doing his very bestest, but is it going to be enough? They have one more crush available. They have the slow, but they got eyes on him. Pablo pulled back in and brought back down, and maybe it's just, it's just feeling too tough. Excalibur comes back in on Noya, but not going to be able to happen. Sniper chases him down and do finally bring down the bear man. And that is going to do it, I believe, as Cloud9 pull it back from the Abyss of Defeat and end up having a 25,000 oh, net worth swing. That's some good Cloud9 Dota right there. High ground defense, Darkseer, Sven, Sniper, who would have thought? <laughs> Pretty damn good. Now that was uh, you know, very well played by Cloud9, not just a simple base defense game they made those really tough plays where you have to leave you got to smoke up you got to go aggressive and you got to find what is supposed to be virtually impossible for you to get and uh they did it man those those tough tough plays the early gems too helping to secure vision just always keeping that mindful as they were rotating around the entire map uh, extremely impressive performance to say the least yeah i mean seventy-one thousand damage dealt by baby knight in that game like, Sniper, he's very much still a hero, life and well, even though there's this new young kid on the block in the, the lone druid build. Um, Mopax, uh, tell me how you feel about this. What, what what was your thoughts about this game just in general? Uh, I, I don't know. It was interesting watching the lone druid. It was hard. Like, I was focusing on that a lot because it's so new, and it's interesting to see the progressions and stuff like that and just seeing, like, how he, he does have that serious damage spike around that, like, 18 to that 30-minute mark. But then there is definitely a little bit of a fall-off there uh, trying to, to close in with the rest of the team. So, the uh, just the, the way they quaint were able to teach, man. One true sniper. That's what it comes down to. Highlander, Baby Knight, Victorious. Good stuff. The, the debates, it's ended for now. The crown <laughs> belongs to Sniper. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be back in just a little bit. Game number two coming up and online. I, I can't believe that was just game number one, right? Like, <laughs> that's nuts to me. Um, but yeah, Cloud9 versus Horde. Who's going to take it? Who is going to be? I mean, if they tie it up, obviously, and they're in a little bit of a better spot, but you really don't want to go out 0-2 to start the entire group stage, especially with all those other great teams in it. But Lyrical Dota as well as Trent Packs. Give us a follow on Twitter if you feel so inclined, but make sure you keep on following the Star Ladder I League Star Series Season 3. We'll be back in a bit.